again. Last week we learned about love. And so I turned these little red hearts into strawberries. And today we're learning about joy. And joy makes me think of the color yellow. And so I'm wearing yellow because I thought today we're talking about joy. So today I'm wearing yellow and then I'm painting with yellow. I'm finding a yellow, I found a yellow fruit to paint. And now I'm making a little smiley face. What do you think? How's that work for joy? Start out us, start us out. We learned two weeks ago, and maybe you're starting to memorize by now, that the fruit of the Spirit is what we're learning about, and the fruit of the Spirit as told in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, against these fruit, there is no law. Meaning, there's never going to be anything that tells you that you're not supposed to love. And there's never going to be anything that tells you that you're not supposed to have joy. These are things that last through all time that should constantly be produced from our hearts. If we truly have the Spirit, if we're following God, if we're pursuing Him, if we're growing, then as fruit trees grow, they produce fruit. And as Christians grow, they produce this fruit. And so I started out uh, my white backdrop for today. And since it's a big one, I poured out a lot of white paint and it was unfortunately way too much white paint. So I already did the backdrop for next week's piece and the next week's patience. So you have a little bit of a sneak peek right here. But last week was love, this week is joy. And so we're gonna be talking today about what the Bible says about joy. And the first thing that I want you to do, I'm gonna fill in the smiley face in just a second. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you, when you pause it, to go over your highs and lows for today or for the week or for the month of June. And I used to do something called five and three. And that's what we called our highs and lows. We'd say five good things that had happened and three maybe not so good things that had happened. And they could be quick, they could be long, depending on your conversation. We did it every night before I went to bed when I was in high school. I would do it with my parents just because it kept me talking to my parents. I did it with my roommates when I was in college. I did it with my husband, Blake, back when we were dating and we were long distance. We were trying to keep in touch. This might be a really good way for you to talk through how you're feeling with your parent or with your child. So five highs and three lows are five good things and three not so good things. And I always like to do more good things than bad things. That's why it's five and three. I'd rather focus on the positives than focus the attention on the negatives. So I want you to pause. Maybe you'll do five and three. Maybe you'll just do one and one. Talk a little bit about those highs and those lows. I'm going to fill in this fill in this piece of fruit and you've probably already figured out what it is but probably by the time I'm done filling it in you'll definitely know what it is. I've got my Young's cup, I'm rinsing my brush out. It is full. You can probably tell already what fruit it is. If so, tell your brother or sister, or your mom and dad, or whoever they're sitting with you, and we'll see if you're right, but I'm pretty sure you know what it is by now. This one was not much of a secret. Now, some of them might be a little more difficult to guess as we go along, but this one was, it's pretty straightforward. So, we're gonna be talking about joy. And you might know what joy is. You might already have an idea of what joy is. But when you think about joy, do you think about joy or do you think about happiness? 
Happiness is a feeling. Happiness is how you feel when your dad says you're going to Disney World or when you find out you got a good grade on a test. That's happiness. When your dog finally does the trick you've been trying to teach him, that's happiness. But joy in the Bible is different than happiness. Joy is something that never ends, something that's always pouring out of you because of what Christ has done in you. And so the first verse that I'm going to read for you today is from Psalm chapter 16. Psalm we haven't talked about a lot, but it's right in the middle of the Bible and most of the Psalms are written by David. And this one is, this Psalm chapter 16 is about how the Lord will never leave you and about how he's always with you. He's faithful. And our main message for today is that happiness fails, but joy is everlasting in the Lord. And that is very true in chapter 16, verse 11. It says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, it says that the sorrow, the pain may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It's something that continues to spring up. It's something that's a new every day. It's not something that goes highs and lows and highs and lows. It's something that's steady, just like God is steady, just like the work he's doing is steady. That joy continues in our hearts, even in the highs and the lows. The joy keeps us focused right there in the middle on how good God is. And that if we truly have his presence here, it says in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And then in James chapter one, if you go to the very end of your Bible, I'm going to turn there in James chapter one. It says that joy is something that you have in all times. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, which we'll talk about this a little bit next week. Joy and peace are tied really closely together because peace is also something that continues and is steady and that this steadfastness, this trusting in God, this having faith in God allows us to not go back and forth between happy and sad and happy and sad. Because God is faithful, we can be consistently joyful in Him and what He's doing. We are supposed to find joy in every circumstance. We talked about that when we talked about the book of Philippians a few weeks ago as part of our epistle series. That Paul, when he's in prison, he's not happy because he's been put in prison. He doesn't get to do what he wants to do, but he still has joy. He still has a positive attitude because he knows that God is doing that for a purpose. In the high times and in the low times, God is helping us. And because of that, we can have joy and thankfulness. Every week, I want you to be able to find one of our verses yourself in your Bible. Maybe by now you know that you're supposed to bring your Bible to the video time because otherwise I'm going to make you run off and get it. And so now is the time. Go get a Bible or pull out your Bible that you already have. And I want you to turn to Romans chapter 15. And this will be our memory verse. Now that you've hopefully had the Galatians verse, the fruits of the spirit memorized, hopefully you can memorize this one too. Romans 15 verse 13. So I'm going to pause the video or I'm going to keep painting and going to pause talking. And so you can find this verse on your own, read through it a couple times, and then I'm going to read through it with you. And we'll talk about it a little bit more, but it's going to tie into next week's lesson as well. And you'll see why. I ended up painting a lot more than I meant to. I hope you had plenty of time to find your verse in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace 
in believing so that the power by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Hope is something that doesn't end. Joy is something that doesn't end. Peace is something that doesn't end. And it's all because of that steadfastness, that steadiness of God. In our world and in our sin and our personalities and our emotions, we're going like this all the time. But this is saying that the God of hope, that this God, this steady, faithful God will give us joy and will give us peace and will give us hope. And so I want you to focus on memorizing that verse this week. Then remember that happiness fails, but joy is everlasting in the Lord. And because we said this is a choice, just like the true version of love is a choice, it's giving something up of yourself. True joy is giving up the part of your emotion that wants to just sit and be sad in the lows. True joy is finding that positive attitude, making that choice to be joyful, to choose positivity because you know that God is in control, because you know that God is doing something big, even in the highs and the lows. That consistency is because of the joy that only God can bring. So that's it for this week. And we have learned about love and joy so far. I hope you have the fruits of the spirit memorized, but if you don't, then I have an activity right here that you can do. If you're not going to do the activity, if you already have it memorized, or if you are no fun and you don't like doing activities, then you can exit the video right now. But I want to give you a little bit of an idea of something that you can do that gets you moving around the room. Here are some things that you need. One, you need a space with a lot of different things going on, whether it be four corners or different objects around the room. And two, you need paper, little pieces of paper that you can write on, crumple up and fold up into small pieces and put either in like a bowl or in a hat or something like that so you can mix them all up. Three, you need more than one person. You need one person who can either already has the fruits of the spirit memorized or can read them and can also read the things that are on the pieces of paper. And then the other person and anybody else can be just extras, but we need that one person who can read or recite the fruits of the spirit in those little pieces of paper. Got it? Have everything, does that make sense? All right, this is how you play. On those pieces of paper, I want you to write things around the room. Like for in here, there's not a lot of options. It's not a very big room. I could say up against the wall and I could go way up against the wall. Or I could say like beside, behind the easel. Or I could say under the table. Or I could say touching the ceiling and maybe do something that I can touch the ceiling. Or I could just say like in the middle of the room or in front of the table or something like that. Different places around the room. Write those on those little pieces of paper. And then crumple them up put them in the hat and then it's kind of like musical chairs you're going to recite or read the fruits of the spirit on repeat cycling through all of them love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness self-control on repeat and you're gonna move around the room as those are being repeated but when you get to the word joy, you have to freeze at one of those special places. And then when you're frozen, the person reading will pause, pick up one of the pieces of paper, read it. And if you are at the place that they say, then you get a point. So let me just show you an example. So I am moving around the room, love, joy, and then the person pulls the thing, pulls the piece of paper, and it says behind the easel. Boom, I got a point. But whoever went under the table didn't get a point. Now, after love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, love, joy, freeze underneath the table, pulls it out, and it says behind the easel again, oh, I didn't get a point, just like that. And you're gonna be so going through those over and over and over again. So you have to have special listening skills to know when you're supposed to say joy and when you're supposed to freeze. And the person maybe take turns being the person to read it off or to recite it so that everybody gets practice going through those fruits of the spirit. Make sense? Sound like fun? Maybe the first person to get to five points wins. 
I hope you can have some fun with that today. And I hope that by next week you have the Fruits of the Spirit memorized. And also, if you already have it memorized and you're looking for something new to memorize, Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Have a good week, HFC kids. Bye.